For the 2024 Bike of the Year test, I've been running the rule over five of the best budget-oriented road bikes money can buy today. I've turned my back on some of the mega money performance race bikes this year to see who's making the best bike for around £1,000 or $1,200. Bike prices have risen a lot in recent years, but we know there are plenty of high quality road bikes still available around this price point. These bikes are great for newcomers or those after a cost effective new bike with plenty of upgrade potential. There can only be one winner, but here I'll give you a rundown of my top three, culminating in the naming of the best budget bike for our 2024 Bike of the Year awards. So watch until the end for that, and also let me know what you think in the comments. All that's left for me to say is a big thanks to our sponsor Met Helmets, who have helped bring our independent Bike of the Year test to you this year. My podium comprises of the Specialized Alley E8, Trek Damani AL2 Gen 4, and the Pinnacle Laterite 2. Let's start with a closer look at the Alley. Originally specialized alloy race bike, the latest version has been modified so now it's a little more endurancy in focus. This means a more accommodating ride position and easier handling than before, although Specialized says this worked to keep the entertainment factor of previous generation bikes. The Demania has always been Trek's endurance platform. There are more expensive carbon versions, but the AL signifies as aluminium makeup, while this version is at the bottom end of the range in terms of spec offered by the US brand. On that front, the Specialized and Trek bikes are almost equally matched. They both rely on 8-speed Shimano Claris drivetrains and feature Tektro mechanical disc brakes. The Alley costs £1,000 or $1,200, while the Demani is £1,050 in the UK, but as near as makes no difference the same in the US. The relative wildcard here is the Pinnacle Laterite 2, as it features rim brakes. Rim brakes in 2024? I can hear the consternation from here, but this isn't a token inclusion, as you're about to find out. Not least for the price, retailing as it does in the UK for £800 or, like the others, $1,200 in the US. It too uses a Shimano Claris drivetrain and Tektro brakes, so it's a fair fight between the three of them on that front. Let's start with the core of the bikes, the frame sets. The frames are all made of aluminium, which is unsurprising at this price point, and all are tidily assembled. The Alley uses specialized E5 premium aluminium, which is said to create the lightest frame in its class. In a size 56 centimeters, it's said to weigh 1,375 grams. The Damani is built using what's fair to say is Trek's equivalent aluminium, 100 series alpha alloy. It's a little more coy on claimed frame weights, but says that the fourth generation Damani AL frame set, fork and all, is around 225 grams lighter than the previous version. Both come with full carbon forks, which helps keep the overall weight in check, while offering up the usual ride quality benefits, mainly smoothing out road buzz while keeping the front end stiff and sharp. With their complete builds at a size 58 centimeters, the Demani weighs 10.6 kilograms, while the Alley is a touch lighter at 10.28 kilos. Now, the Pinnacle Laterite is almost no different. It too has a carbon fork, but with an alloy steerer. But other than that, it's the same alloy frame carbon fork approach, albeit with dropouts designed around traditional skewers rather than through axles. Our test bike in a size XL weighs a not too shabby 10.71 kilos. All of these bikes have the fixtures and fittings you would hope for, especially if you intend to use these bikes to be daily workhorses, or frankly, if you're new to road cycling and aren't quite sure yet how you'll end up using your new bike. Mudguard and pannier rack mounts are present and correct, although Demani comes with the added bonus of bento box mounts on the top tube. Now, this is an increasingly common sight on endurance bikes with one eye on the gravel seat, while the Demani's frame set has space for 38mm tyres without fenders in place. That's 3mm wider than the Alley and 6mm more than the Pinnacle. The Demani's frame is also visually a little tidier, thanks to cable routing into the headset rather than further back in the frame. This doesn't make any performance difference, and mechanics might find servicing a slightly trickier, but the extra challenge seems to be small. All in, the Demani feels like it's the most versatile and polished of the three frame sets here. If you're relatively new to road cycling, I reckon the chances are that presenting a geometry chart and talking about specific tube lengths and angles might well confuse the issue. If you want to delve into those, you can check out my reviews of these bikes on bikeradar.com as and when they're published. Here, I'm going to stick to how the bikes feel. The Damani is certainly the most relaxed feeling of the three bikes. In fact, it was the most relaxed of all five bikes tested in the budget category. Importantly, I found the bike very easy to ride from the get-go. It misses a little excitement compared to something like the Alley or even the Cube Attain Pro I also tested, 
but it can still react keenly when you put the effort in. The Alley certainly wears its history with pride. It used to be a racier bike than it is today, and as someone who's owned one in the past and ridden newer Alleys since, the latest version has certainly retained much of that. It's sharp and sporty feeling, and although it's lost a little of its edge, there's absolutely no reason in my mind why you couldn't use it for speedy sport teams or racing if you wanted. While fast, the handling is confidence-inspiring and has a better blend of characteristics than the Damani if you want to get closer to a race bike-like experience. The Pinnacle Laterite has also impressed in this regard. It has a longer reach than the other two bikes here, meaning that the handlebars are a bit further away from the saddle for a more stretched out ride position, but it's, it's not outrageous. The handling is just as well balanced as the Alley, with slightly sharper behavior compared to the Damani. When choosing bikes, handling characteristics are just as important as anything else, but ironically are relatively hard to define. There's no winner as such here, it's just that the Damani is a notably more relaxed bike versus the Alley or Laterite, which are, in turn, a smidgen more exciting. What's best for you will depend on the kind of riding you want to do, and whether you prefer a calmer or more reactive ride quality from your bikes. The sense of speed from all three bikes is clear and present. As someone who's tested some of the fastest and most expensive bikes around today, I can assure you that for the money, there's plenty of bang for buck here. The specs of these bikes, which I'll come onto soon, won't set the world alight, but all have a decent turn of speed when called for. The Alley and Damani especially benefit from their wider tyres and quality contemporary wheels. They pick up speed efficiently, and riding at 30 km per hour on a flat road, for example, isn't unexpectedly taxing. In short, I was impressed. The Laterite is no slouch either, and it serves as a reminder that shifting to disc brakes, for all its benefits, doesn't make as much difference to speed as one might assume. In terms of ride comfort, the Damani is the clear winner. At this point, it's impossible to ignore the specification, given it has 32mm wide tyres versus the 30mm tyres fitted to the Alley, and the 25mm rubber on the Laterite. The rims have their part to play here too, but all things being equal, wider tyres carry more volume and can be run at lower pressures, contributing to improved comfort, grip, speed over rough tarmac and broken surfaces. When you throw in the relaxed handling, it makes for a very comfortable ride. I've had less comfortable experiences on carbon endurance bikes costing three times the money before now. The Alley also presents a decently comfortable ride, but it's not quite as smooth feeling as the Damani. Tire sizes aside, it feels as though Specialized hasn't wanted to lose all of the sharp and rigid characteristics of the previous Alley bikes, and has opted to make the frame set a little stiffer and more rigid versus the Damani. On balance, there's nothing wrong with that. As I've said, it helps make the Alley's ride more exciting, but it's worth factoring in if comfort on a road bike is a big concern for you. The latter ride is the weakest of the three in terms of comfort, but it's not like I emerged from my rides feeling beaten up or especially fatigued. If I owned that bike in particular, I'd want to upgrade the wheels and tyres, but it's the latter that would probably make the biggest difference. 25mm tyres are pretty narrow by modern standards after all. Even the fastest riders in the world are using 28mm or larger tyres at the Tour de France these days, as there's generally little to lose by going for larger volume rubber on your road bike. In terms of specification, each bike sees a collection of kit that's functional. Alloy wheels, handlebars and stems, standard 27.2mm diameter seat posts, and simple alloy railed saddles. It's all solid stuff, and there's nothing that can't be easily switched out further down the line if you wanted, although the disc brake wheels on the Alley and Demani use six bolt rotors rather than the simpler centerlog format commonly seen with higher spec group sets. As it is, each bike sees the same drivetrain installed, Shimano Claris R2000. This has eight sprockets at the cassette paired with two chain rings up front and offers all the gearing you really need to get going and enjoy a ride on varied terrain. At this level, it's unreasonable to expect the sharper shifting performance you get from more premium group sets like Shimano Tiagra or 105, but when well set up and maintained, I had no issues with changing gears. Of course, the cassette spacing is a little gappy, a single shift can make a big change to your riding cadence that you might ideally like, but it's par for the course here. If you're not coming from a bike with a pricier 11 or 12 speed group set, then you might not even notice this. The bikes deviate a little in the detail, cassettes and chains are swapped for cheaper models, but in reality these changes make no discernible difference to the overall performance. Both the Alley and Damani spec Tektro's mechanical C550 disc brakes, 
Performance is adequate, but it's worth noting that if you're familiar with the power of hydraulic brakes, you'll need to adapt your riding to accommodate the longer stopping distances. If you ever wanted to upgrade to full hydraulic brakes in the future, which both frames can sport, you'll need to go up two tiers to Shimano's Tiagra level. That's obviously an additional investment, although I think both bikes will take such significant upgrades well. The Laterite, of course, has rim brakes. These are also from Tektro, the R315 calipers, in case you were wondering. Now, the truth of the matter is this. As spec here, the Laterite's rim brakes performed better than the disc brakes on either the Dabani or Ale. Surprised? I was too. But paired with alloy rims, they proved more powerful and a little more controllable. Even in the rain, the conditions in which disc brakes are supposed to be head and shoulders above, I struggled to separate them in terms of the confidence they gave me. Of course, the upgrade ceiling is far lower on the latter ride than it is for the two disc brake equipped bikes here. While better rim brake calibers are available, you simply can't install the latest and greatest hydraulic disc brakes on the latter ride's frame. And there's no doubt, in my mind at least, that even entry level hydraulic brakes are better than the best rim brakes. That said, if you're unfussed about upgrading your bike in the future, then that needn't concern you. The last right is certainly the cheapest here at £800 in the UK, although it's $1,200, remember, in the US. That price draws it level with the Alle and Demani in the US. But in the UK, the Alle is a flat £1,000, while the Demani is £1,050. In Europe, the Alle and Demani are £1,200 and €1,199 respectively, but the Alle is 200 Australian dollars cheaper down under than the Demani at $1,800. Value then is a little territory specific and the Demani is the most expensive on average of the three bikes. So the winner. Despite costing a little more, the Trek Demani AL2 Gen 4 is a deserving winner of the 2024 Bike of the Year budget category. The price difference is by no means extreme and is justified by the most versatile and feature-packed design and specification of the three. I also think that, for most people shopping in this price region, it's not unreasonable to suppose that the easiest handling bike might be the best one suited for you. That said, this is, of course, entirely up to you. If a race your edge is what you want, the LA E5 is likely to appeal. It earns second place here, missing out on the top spot by a whisker. The tyres are a little narrower and ultimate clearance is a little less, but that shouldn't stop you from buying it if you prioritise sharper handling. A well-earned third spot is therefore taken by the Pinnacle Laterite 2. It's a fine bike, and although the disc brake bikes here are more modern and ultimately more upgradable, the Laterite 2 is still a great low-cost entry point to the world of road cycling. So that's the top three bikes for the 2024 Budget Bike of the Year category, according to yours truly. But what do you think? Do you think I'm right? or are you itching to let me know how wrong I am? I'd love to know, so I look forward to reading your comments below. So, like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you want to know which upgrades you should make to your bike, then check out this video.